Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome back to Investor Intel. I'm Peter Clausey. The markets are a wonderful place to allow us to connect with people and then reconnect with people. And I'm thrilled today to be talking to Thomas Smink from Hemostemics. Tom, you and I first met in about 1998. Yes, it was. You've been in the markets a very long time with a stellar reputation. Thank you, Peter. Well, you've put together good deals over the years and you have a large following. You know, it's important that we call out the good people and also name the bad people. So good for you. Yeah, well, as you know, you're you're as good as your last deal in this business, and and uh, you know, fortunately, I've I've come across some uh, some uh, good technologies and put together teams that have uh, succeeded. So hemostemics is a new story to me. I did my research, and I have a ton of questions for you. So let's start. It, the website says you're a co-founder. The company's been around since 2003, I think, 2006. So you've been involved with the company off and on since then. You were out of the company for a bit, and now you're back in. How did that happen? So, yes, I, I co-founded the company in 2005 when a business partner of mine, Roger Burgesson, uh, had a heart procedure, a stent operation that went horribly wrong. He flew to Thailand and had his stem cell procedure done. He was patient number 35 of this company. He's an investment banker, trained on Wall Street. Uh, while he was there, the principals of the company uh, expressed their interest in getting the company properly financed. So Roger gave me a call, literally from his hospital bed, and said, uh, Tom... I'm here in Thailand, and I need uh, you know I need to talk to you. And I said I'm all ears, Roger. And uh, and so um, he put the principals on the phone. That was November 2005. They flew into Toronto in December 2005. We sat at the Royal York and put the deal together in 48 hours. Um, and that was the birth of Hemostemic, um, a a licensee of a company based in Israel. Theravite Inc. Uh, Theravite Limited. We created Theravite Inc. as the licensee, which had a license to all of its technology for North America. Right. And then the then the company moved to Calgary in 2012, and you started developing your own intellectual property and doing your own R&D. Right. What we did was we uh, the 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 licensor was spending money faster than we could uh, than we could raise it as a licensee. So we 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 amalgamated with uh, the licensor in 2008, uh, ran the company as a, a private company uh, for for five years, raised it about 10.8 million dollars, um, uh, and then it moved to Calgary in 2012. Uh, which is where we raised most of the money from. I stepped back at that point in time and, uh, you know, remained a shareholder. My quick math shows you have roughly $4 million in cash and treasury. We just raised uh, about $4.2 million and paid a, a number of uh, bills. We have enough runway here for, the, for certainly for the next uh, 12 months plus. And I went through the management team, the advisory board, and the directors. You truly have an independent group of well-known, well-respected people working for you. This is not a group in anybody's yeah. pocket. No, this is that was not, that was job one, right? Came back in as CEO. The first thing you had to do was put build credibility, um, and and so yes, I re, I was fortunate to. Uh, uh, find Peter Lacey as a shareholder, uh, and and when I explained to him what I thought the uh, the accurate picture was, he uh, like me uh, got <laughs> very upset. Um, he is uh, how about right righteously indignant? Yes. Well, he's the chairman of of Service Corporation, a company he built from one John Deere dealership uh, to 63 company owned stores doing, you know, profitable, doing 1.1 billion in revenue. And, uh, and, and, um, you know, so he's a seasoned uh, CEO and executive chairman. He agreed to, uh, to join the board and, uh, and become the chairman. Um, 
Beside him is Dr. Ronnie Hirschman, an esteemed cardiologist out of New York. He has been an investor in the company since 2003 when he wrote his first check for just under a million dollars. Uh, when he saw as a cardiologist how ACP affected the hearts of patients suffering from end-stage heart failure. Um, beside him is Lawrence Swanberg, uh, one of uh, the Swanberg brothers who uh, are, you know, noted businessmen in uh, Grand Prairie, Alberta. And, and, uh, and the second thing I did was I went and recruited an independent board of advisors. So uh, Sheila Copps is you know, former Deputy Prime Minister of Canada. David Sabushi is the former Solicitor General of Ontario. And Tim Chang is the former Managing Director of Private Equity Investment for AIG in Hong Kong. Uh, at, all independent, uh, obviously, you know, very esteemed individuals in their own right. Right. All, all ICDs, I believe. Yes. <laughs> right. So, so now we can talk about the real business of the business, uh, which is to treat various medical conditions. The one that caught my eye was ischemia, which is a lack of oxygen in the limbs, leading to amputation, disease, uh, infection. A lot of bad medical things can happen if you suffer from ischemia. A lot of diabetics suffer from ischemia. Does your product help that situation? Yes, that's exactly, that's exactly what we treat. So ischemia is a, a reduction in circulation in the circulatory system. That can happen in the toes, feet, and legs of, of diabetics. It can happen in the lungs of patients suffering from uh, you know, idiopathic pulmonary hypertension or COPD, and it can happen in the heart. It, you know, it has angina, as ischemic cardiomyopathy, has dilated cardiomyopathy, and as end-stage heart failure. And we have treated more than 500 patients in the clinics um, uh, of patients suffering from each of those diseases with significant success, and, I, and that's measured not only by the, the results of the 500 patients themselves, uh, but also by an investigator-led phase two clinical trials, where we've done uh, clinical trials of angina patients, clinical trials of ischemic cardiomyopathy patients, clinical trials of uh, peripheral arterial disease and critical limb ischemia patients. And, and um, with, again, published in the journals, uh, with you know significant efficacy, uh, I have to ask: Is there any impact upon either the SARS-CoV-2 virus or the resulting uh, COVID disease? So it's uh, I'm going to say conservatively yes. Uh, the the proof will be in the next clinical trial uh, that that is done in this patient grouping, but it. Um, you know, if you are reading in the press like I am that you're getting, uh, you know, the patients that are getting COVID that are surviving COVID are having uh, problems breathing, problems um, with their with their heart. Um, that to me is demonstrative of a, of, of an, a, a level of ischemia that uh, that could be treated with ACP. So it's anecdotal so far. Now you need to run the data to back it up. It's anecdotal. We need to we need to create a uh, a clinical trial that uh, is focused on patients that have COVID that have these comorbidities of uh, ischemia in the heart and and lungs, uh, and and uh, demonstrate to the world that it works. So now I'm interested in the story. I'm going to go do some more research. I'd like to talk to you again at the end of your next quarter. Catch up. You put out 48 press releases this year on financial engineering. I can't wait to see what you do in Q1. Thomas Smink from Hemostemics. Thank you very much. Once again, back with the company. Good for you. Peter Clausey signing off from Investor Intel. Thanks for your time.